I've wanted to make this video for a while. It's on something I've found very useful over the years, and I hope you will too. The ISO system of limits and fifths. Contrary to most of the other videos on the topic, I'll be presenting this with a working microphone. If you've seen as many videos online as I have about this, you'll get that joke. Before I get too far into this, I want to say that this is my understanding of the ISO limits and fit system. And I did do my due diligence to make sure it was correct. But if I make a mistake, please let me know in the comments so I can either add edits to the description or if I'm way off base, remake the video. So starting off, any dimension in existence has some tolerance to it. The tolerance specifies how much higher or lower dimension can be from nominal and still be acceptable. The space between the upper and lower limit is often called the tolerance zone. Think about it like football uprights. Each upright represents a limit, upper or lower. To score a field goal, we kick the ball towards the center, but no matter how the ball flies, as long as it ends up between the uprights, it's acceptable, and our parents will still love us. Before we get any further, I should mention that I'll be talking about shafts and pins fitting in holes, but per ISO 286, this system can be used for internal and external features of size. You'll sometimes see it used for keys fitting in keyways, for example. How things fit together is determined by how much free space there is between the two parts. If there's lots, there will be lots of space for the parts to move. If there's only a little, there will be a lot less space. Finally, if there's no space, the part won't be able to move. In this video, I'll show the hole tolerance zone is red, and the shaft tolerance zone is green. This means that, without measuring, the actual outer diameter of the shaft will end up somewhere in the green zone, and the actual diameter of the hole will end up somewhere in the red zone. A pin can fit into a hole one of three different ways. Clearance, transition, and interference. A clearance fit means that there will always be space between the two parts, no matter how the tolerances turn out. Transition fit means there's sometimes space between the parts and sometimes there isn't, but it's usually pretty close. Interference fits never have space between the parts, and one part always has to be forced into the other. It turns out these categories can actually be quite broad. For example, a 9mm pin fitting into a 10mm hole is a clearance fit, but it would be extremely loose. A 9.98mm pin in a 10mm hole is also a clearance fit, but it's much tighter. The former might be good just to make sure two parts don't hit each other, and the latter might be good for making sure the pin stays approximately in the same position relative to the hole. Different fits, as well as their descriptions, can be found by looking up preferred fits and tolerances in the Machinery's Handbook. There is a preferred fit for most situations, and this is a really good starting point. Also check out the YouTube video by Tarka on the ANSI system of fits and tolerances. The designations are different, but the concepts and considerations are the same. So if we want a dowel pin to fit loosely in a hole, we measure it, we ream the hole to have a little extra space in it, and we put it in. The problem arises when you have a bag of 100 dowel pins and you have to ream 100 holes. Dowel pins have a tolerance on them, and their sizes will always vary a bit. Your reamer will also cut slightly different sized holes, depending on your work holding, wear in the reamer, and the cutting parameters, all of which can change while reaming your 100 holes. Because you bought the dowel pins and have no control over their tolerance, this is called a shaft basis fit. So the challenge is now to decide what size reamer to use to make sure that all the dowel pins fit properly. If you know the tolerance range you can expect from your reamer, and you know the tolerances of the dowel pins, you can choose a reamer size where the smallest hole the reamer can cut still has space for the largest dowel pin. This is called the allowance, and is typically something you choose. You are allowing, say, 25 microns of space between the largest dowel pin and the smallest reamed hole. Because there will be other smaller pins and your reamer will sometimes cut larger holes, you may also find yourself cutting the largest possible hole for the smallest possible pin. The extra space on top of the allowance is called the clearance. If the clearance is too large, the fit might not work. The only way to change the clearance without changing the allowance is to tighten up your tolerance zones, either by changing your manufacturing methods or buying tighter tolerance pins. Conveying tolerance zones can be a bit annoying. Say you own a factory that makes dowel pins. You want to be able to tell customers what the tolerance zone is on each size of dowel pin, but it would be cumbersome to have to create engineering drawings for each size. So instead, you can just say the tolerance will always be a bit over the specified dimension where a bit over scales roughly proportionally to the target size. We could say that all the pins will be between 0.1 and 0.3% larger than the nominal dimension. The problem is we don't want people to have to constantly calculate what these percentages are. The system we use instead is called the ISO 286-2 standard. ISO 286-2 uses numbers and letters to convey tolerance zones. Things like M6 and H7. The number, also known as the International Tolerance Grade, roughly indicates how large the tolerance zone is, and the letter indicates roughly where it is. The letter H always means that the specified tolerance zone includes the nominal size as one of the limits, and it diverges into the material. For holes, H means the smallest the hole can be is the nominal size, but it's allowed to be larger. For shafts, 
H means the largest the shaft can be is the nominal size, and it can only be smaller. The H tolerant zone is important because it's taken as the middle. Shafts or pins with tolerant zones before H in the alphabet will never be the nominal size. Holes will always be larger and shafts will always be smaller. After H, there are a few tolerant zones, such as J and JS, where the shaft can be larger or smaller, but as you go further through the alphabet, the shafts will get larger and larger and the holes will get smaller and smaller. Holes always get an uppercase letter and shafts always get a lowercase letter. Okay, so now we have a naming scheme for tolerant zones. For a given fit, we will usually have one component driving the other one's required tolerant zone. In this example, where we bought the dowel pins, we have no input on their tolerance, so it was a shaft basis fit. If we're designing a shaft that has to fit in a purchased bushing, we can't control the tolerance of the bushing, so we have a hole basis fit. Shaft or hole basis fits often use an H tolerant zone, respectively, since the H tolerant zone contains the nominal size as one of the limits. If we're lucky enough to be designing both parts, we do have some discretion, but you would normally base your fit on whatever side of the fit is harder to change. The preference tends to be designing for a hole basis fit, as in general, there tend to be more options for precisely reducing the diameter of a shaft than precisely expanding a hole. So what does a fit look like in the ISO system? It's simply the two tolerant zones specified next to each other. An H7G6 fit means, for example, the hole has an H7 tolerance and the shaft has a G6 tolerance. I've cut some holes in this piece of aluminum to show some examples of different fits. This is an undersized H6 tolerance dowel pin. The E7H6 and F7H6 are reasonably loose clearance holes. You can rattle the 12.7mm H6 dowels around a little bit, and they basically drop right through. The H7H6 and G7H6 are much closer fits, and could perhaps be used to locate parts while remaining removable. The JS7H6 is a transition fit that, as you can see, ended up being on the light interference side, but a rubber mallet would work to tap the pin in for a semi-permanent joint. Finally, the P7H7 is an interference fit and would probably require a hydraulic press, or at least a beefy arbor press to install. This might be a good time to point out that, contrary to my labels and my past example, individual holes and shafts can't be called JF7 or H7. The JS7 refers to the tolerance zone that the hole falls in. A hole that is 10.001 millimeters is in the JS7 tolerance zone, but it's also in the H6, H5, and JS5 tolerance zones. You have to remember that we can't measure the hole until after it's cut, and we have to specify the acceptable tolerance zone before it's cut. The fits also have some range to them. For example, these three holes are in the H7 tolerant zone, and these are three H6 dowels. Note how they fall through the holes at different speeds due to the minute differences in the clearance. The numbers themselves are actually determined by the IT system, the International Tolerance System. Every manufacturing process can be statistically analyzed and an IT number can be determined. This means that if I'm reaming a hole, I can look up the reaming process and see that at best I can achieve about an IT7. So I can't specify an H5 or a G5 hole if it's going to be reamed. Likewise, if you have to design something to fit inside a drilled hole, even if you don't have the tolerance for the hole in front of you, you can look up drilling and see that it has at best about IT10. So the hole basis for the fit is going to be around H10. So why would you use this system? Personally, I like how much information is available through just two digits. If I have to make a bearing seat on a shaft for an 8mm bearing, I can simply look up what tolerance is required from Machinery's Handbook or something similar. If I need a bearing seat for an 8mm bearing on a shaft that will see reasonably high loads, I can see that it recommends a JS5 fit. The machinists are not going to be happy about that. I know from the fact that it's JS it'll probably be a transition fit and might need a little force to install, and the 5 tells me I'll need an IT5 process to make it, which will either involve very accurate turning or cylindrical grinding. As another example, if I want a nice sliding fit and the shaft I require will be in the H6 tolerance zone, I can simply specify a G7 on the hole tolerance without having to estimate how much allowance or clearance I want. Specifying a tolerance zone like this on a drawing does mean that the machinist might have to look up the actual numbers, so typically I include the fit as well as the tolerances. So, knowing the different tolerance zones and having a list of a dozen or so preferred fits, we should be able to design parts that fit together how we want. We also have a means of vaguely checking if a manufacturing method will be capable of hitting those tolerances. In addition to the oft-used pin and hole example, the system can be used for internal and external parallel faces, such as keys and keyways, or other features of size. Well, that was a bit of a dry one, but hopefully you found it useful. If you find any mistakes, let me know in the comments so I can correct them. Thanks a lot for watching.